Oh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join Boundless Journeys today to learn about our small group adventures exploring the great wilderness areas of Botswana. We are very excited to share this fantastic safari destination with you and hope it will inspire you to join us this year or next for an unforgettable wildlife adventure. Just a quick shout out to a few of you who have traveled with us to Botswana in the past uh, and a few of you who I know are planning to join us later this year. I hope you enjoy either reminiscing or previewing the adventure to come. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few details. You'll note that we have muted everyone. If at any time you'd like to ask a question, you may type it into the chat window. We'll run through the presentation first and plan to answer any questions at the end. Before we get into the details of these safaris, I just wanted to introduce our Botswana team. I am Karen Cleary. I am the in-house Africa specialist here at Boundless Journeys. I first traveled to Africa more than 10 years ago and have been going back as often as I can since. I help create our African itineraries with our local teams. I travel to our destinations to keep up to date on new opportunities. And of course, I also help our travelers plan their safaris. Also here today is Craig Glattar. For those who attended our South Africa webinar last month, you'll recall that Craig is one of my main liaisons to our teams on the ground throughout Southern Africa and is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, we'll take some time a bit later as well to introduce you to a few of our core Botswana guides. Um, Craig is looking forward to introducing you all to the unique and wonderful ecosystems in Botswana, so I will let him take it from here. Thank you very much, Karen. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody else, for your time uh, this evening. Jeepers, Botswana, what a place. I mean, Botswana is historically one of Africa's absolute outstanding success stories. Um, you know, prior to independence in 1966, it was one of the world's poorest countries, but it's now become one of the world's most um, successful countries. And this all largely stems or originates in and around what we're going to focus on in the beginning of this webinar, which is the Okavongo Delta system. And it largely comes down to quite a simple fact, and that is the fact around the sustainability of this area of the Okavango Delta. Um, and Karen can tell you a little bit more also about what that sustainability actually means. Yeah, thanks Craig. To me, one of the most special parts of being on safari in Botswana was just this overwhelming sense of wilderness that you get there. It's really a feeling of being in and part of nature. Uh, I've traveled a lot through uh, many of the great wildlife areas in Africa and quite honestly I've never been anywhere else that feels really as untouched as Botswana does. Uh, and this isn't just by chance as Craig alluded to, um, you know, the, from the government right down through the camps that we use on our small group safaris, uh, they really represent the very best of sustainable travel practices. Um, these camps have quite consciously chosen to favor very low impact safaris. Um, they have very few rooms available on enormous private concessions and what that means for us is that we get out um, exploring these amazing places and encountering its wildlife in almost complete solitude. Uh, but what it means for the wildlife, of course, is that they have a very well preserved and healthy ecosystem to exist in. Um, I'll leave it to Craig to tell us a bit more about the specific areas you can discover on our Botswana safaris. Thank you very much, Karen. Yes, so the main area we're going to focus on in the beginning of this webinar series will, of course, be the actual Okavongo Delta system that you can see illustrated up here that I'm pointing to with the little red marker. But that only lies at the crux of a number of different experiences that one can have throughout Botswana, ranging from the central Kalahari game reserve south of the Delta system into the Delta system, Miremi game reserve obviously an important part of that Delta system, and even further north of that Delta system into the Lanyanti, the Chobe, you know, all the way up ending in an itinerary at a place as iconic as the Victoria Falls. So 
really a safari journey through Botswana can encompass all of these regions. And it's important to remember, and Boundless Journeys have done a great job here, that traveling through these regions is largely dependent on the seasonality of the area. And that's why we're going to look at two programs, one of them the Ultimate Botswana and Victoria Falls program, and the second one which is focusing on the Okavango Delta together with the Kalahari Desert System of this program. Now Botswana, to put it in perspective, is roughly the size of Texas. So imagine that Okavango Delta system that you see right up here in the northern part of the country, um, illustrating just with the red pointer there. That little delta system is only about, and I say only lightly, 6,000 square miles in size. And it's filled with water channels, lagoons, and islands. And it's one of the largest inland delta systems in the world. And what makes this area truly, truly remarkable is that this wetland paradise is located you know, deep within the middle of what is the arid Kalahari Desert. And each year the floodwaters flow from catchment areas over 600 miles away into the delta system in the middle of what is essentially this area's dry season to create the absolute miracle that is the Okavango. And it's this Okavango and this area that sustains just a massive huge diversity of fauna and flora. So that game viewing is excellent throughout the year. But it does change with the seasons. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about that seasonality uh, as we look at this next slide here. Imagine for a moment the Okavango Delta is your hand connected to your wrist. Your wrist is what is called the panhandle system. I'm illustrating up here. And then your opening hand is the actual Okavango Delta system. Now this water travels for 620 miles all the way down till it hits what is a fault line that's known as the Gumara fault line. And it reaches this fault, first fault line. That would be the point where your wrist meets your hand, if you're looking at your hand at the moment. It hits that fault line in about April, May. And then it slowly, as you can see in these illustrations from April to May and on to June, it slowly starts to flow outwards over a distance of around 300 miles at a 20 degree gradient until it hits the other end of the delta, another fault line called the Tamalakana. And it reaches that fault line in about September, October. And that is when the flood or inundation is at its most or furthest reaching point. After September, October, that inundation or flood starts to recede again. So suddenly you have this ebb and flow of water. The flow from May to October, the ebb, the receding water line from about November to April. Now remember that when that water is arriving from May to October and pushing out as you open the palm of your hand, remember that that water is arriving in the middle of what is Southern Africa's dry season, our winter, the converse of your summer. So that's an important ecological indicator because it's a huge amount of water arriving in essentially what is the middle of the dry season. Now this ebb and flow of this water system throughout the year that changes every single year as the channels change with it results in some really unique experiences across the delta system that can be had. And we classify them partly as water-based experiences, land-based and combination-based experiences. So take for example the Ultimate Botswana and Victoria Falls program that Boundless Journeys have put together. They focus on areas such as Chitabi Camp camp for more of your land-based experiences, which we'll get into some more detail. Then they traverse over the delta system deeper towards the panhandle and into the water environment of the delta at a camp like Kidjira. After that point, they'll travel further north up into the Linyanti, along the Linyanti fault lines and swamps, and focusing on a camp that is along an incredible channel known as the Savuti, finally ending up at Victoria Falls. So you can start to see how an itinerary in a very short format can traverse many different habitats where there's a whole bunch of different experiences that we're going to get into some more detail right now. So traversing this area of over 6,000 square miles in a completely pristine open wilderness requires something a little more inventive than driving and that's why guests would be traversing this area in light aircraft, ranging from air vans to different size Cessnas that take four to five passengers, 
up to even 12-seater grand caravans that you can see in this image here. And that's part of the experience, getting between the camps, seeing this absolute pristine, true wilderness unfold beneath your feet as you fly from one completely different habitat and ecosystem to another. Now this next slide is going to give you a little clue as to how the actual delta system functions. And there's three indicators here that I'm going to touch on. We call them the environmental or ecological engineers. The first one is this little island you see at the bottom of the screen. The second one would be these larger, deeper channels. And the third one would be these smaller little channels running to and away uh, from that island that you see there. And these are due to the three ecological engineers. The first and most important one you learn about, termites. As termites fly and move around the delta system, they land with their queen, start a new colony. And what do termites do? Well, termites start to grow their own gardens within their colonies in layman's terms. And these gardens provide the fungi, the food resource that they survive on. But it also provides a really great environment for the growth of other smaller plants and grasses and bushes. And as these termite mounds grow and expand, so does the vegetation in and around the termite mound where this nutrient-rich created soil and fungi have been made by the termites. And that attracts more plants to grow. And in turn, these islands go from next to nothing to larger islands. And smaller islands float by and attach and catch on. And they become bigger, bigger islands due to the termites. And as that termite colony maybe dies off and moves to another area, so that island actually grows and shrinks and appears and disappears throughout the delta system. So it's a continual change in wetland. The third ecological engineer creating those bigger channels are the hippos. And their movement opens and closes channels throughout the seasons. And they're eating various different types of vegetation, papyrus, etc., you know, passing on um, their feces into that system, which provides a nutrient-rich food source for other plants to grow and change. And the third ecological engineer is, of course, the elephants, those smaller channels. The elephants move between the islands, move amongst the larger channels that the hippos have created, and in turn, they too, like the hippos, open and close various channels. So there's this continual change of water direction through the delta system, which makes it such a unique area. It's not only about the water areas and the islands that are created that make the system so interesting, but all of the floodplains in and around, between and surrounding the edges of the actual delta system. And it's these floodplains that also ebb and flow as water arrives and flows over them and recedes that attract huge amount of plains game. Letteries and zebra and giraffe and any form of plains game. And you can be sure behind the plains game you're going to find a massive amount of predators. And it's this dense variety of plains game and predators that has given the Okavongo Delta in Botswana its reputation for ground zero for wildlife safaris in southern Africa. But I'm going to hand over to Karen because she has quite an interesting story behind this image. Thanks, Craig. Uh, yeah, this was just something that I wanted to conclude because uh, for my last trip to Botswana, it was a really, really special experience. And just one example of the stories that, you know, our guests get to be a part of on our safaris. Um, these photos here are from, as I said, my last trip to Botswana. This happens to be a young leopard called Pula. She is the daughter of the famous leopard Legadima. Um, some of you may know this leopard as the subject of a National Geographic film called Eye of the Leopard. If you haven't seen it, it's certainly worth watching. Um, Legadima had been out hunting when we came across Pula and her brother, who's also pictured above, um, who'd been left to watch after themselves. She'd been gone about three days, so the guides were um, keeping a close eye on, on them just to make sure they weren't getting into too much trouble. Um, and because there are so few others exploring these you know, enormous private reserves, we had the good fortune of being able to spend nearly an entire afternoon with these two young leopards while they played and napped um, without any other vehicles sort of disturbing our peace or their peace. Um, eventually, Legadima herself appeared, which was quite a moment for you know, somebody who's seen that film. Uh, and we were able to witness their very touching reunion. It was definitely one of the best leopard sightings I 
iPad, um, and it's the kind of unique experience that Botswana offers in that you can spend time with these animals without other vehicles around. Today, uh, Pula has grown and is a, an adult leopard in her own right. She has her own territory, and our guests are still continuing to see and spend time with her. Of course, the predator viewing in Botswana isn't always about these adorable young cats, though, is it? No, certainly not, Karen. Thank you for that lovely story. No, the predator viewing gets intense. Imagine all of these predators congregated around this delta system, everyone looking for their piece of the pie and all the planes game around, and you get some pretty spectacular interactions that one can have when visiting this part of the delta. Be it predator on predator interaction, like this lioness and this crocodile having a go at it, or even some more unusual interactions as animals condense in this area. An unusual thing that you're seeing here is an impala tried to cross uh, one of the channels and a hippo has attacked it. So incredible wildlife interactions in the delta system, in and around the delta system. Now, we alluded to this a little bit earlier on in the presentation already, that there's quite some seasonality around the Okavango Delta, or at least in Botswana. And this is where boundless journeys have put together two fantastic programs that cover the best areas at the best time of year. The Kalahari and Okavongo Delta Safari, well this starts off in the central Kalahari Game Reserve, we'll get to that in more detail, three nights at Kalahari Plains Camp, then it's on into the Delta System, two nights at Kidra Camp, and finally ending with two nights up at Victoria Falls in Livingston. The ultimate Botswana and Victoria Falls Safari Again, focuses more in and around that delta system. Two nights at a camp called Chitabula Diva, on for two nights at Kidra in the middle of the delta system, and further north of the delta system up to Savuti camp for three nights, and then a single night at Tokalea uh, in Livingston Town, Victoria Falls. It's always a great idea to consider two nights if you can in the Livingston Victoria Falls area, because there's a range of activities one can have there. Let's have a look first at the Ultimate Botswana and Victoria Falls program and some of the accommodation that we have here. The first one is a camp called Chitabi Ladiba. Now, Chitabi Ladiba is situated on a beautiful old tree island. It's in the southeast of the Okavongo Delta system. There's eight very spacious ensuite Meru style tented rooms, spacious ensuite bathrooms, including double vanity basins, everything that one could wish for. And really important, one of these images here of the elephant in camp in Botswana with their stringent focus on sustainable tourism, a lot of the camps will have no fences, no protective lines around them. So animals can move in and out of camp quite freely. I think that adds to the complete wild experience that Botswana offers. And an area like Chitabi, and certainly where Chitabi Ladiva camp is located, is ground zero for some of the best predator viewing in and around the delta system. The concession size is about 55,000 acres. What makes this area really unique is it's a convergence zone of two varied habitats. There's Mopani woodland, characterized by all those acacia shrubs, that meets, you know, your typical Okavango Delta habitats, and the palm dotted floodplains, wooded islands, beautiful waterways. And that's why you're getting a lot of key mammal species in this area, and more particularly the predators ranging all the way from the lion to the, to the cheetah that actually hunt in the more open grassland areas, the wild dog packs that move through the woodlands, or even the leopards high densities of leopards located in and around this area that hunt in those beautiful woodland parts. And on to even the spotted hyenas as they scavenge the lion's kills and follow the wild dog as they move their way through the, excuse me, through the Chitabi area. After a stay in an area such as Chitabi, <coughs> it's on deeper into the actual delta system to Kidura camp, which is a beautiful wooded camp located on a perfect little pristine island deeper in the delta system. Now imagine this is the only camp on an island inside a concession that is over 14,000 acres in size. So you're starting to get an idea as to how exclusive a safari experience in Botswana is. And what's key about this area is it's situated right in the middle of one of Okavongo's key waterway areas and is surrounded by papyrus swamps and beautiful wooded islands. There's a lot more to the species in and around this area 
on this beautiful camp that is actually accessed by boat. It's a Robinson Crusoe type experience, but it's not only boats that one can enjoy here, but how about Makoroing? Makoroing is an ancient art that was practiced by the Bai tribe, and they used this means of poling their way around in a dugout canoe to traverse these pristine waterways. You won't only be seeing the smaller stuff around here. If you're lucky enough and you've got your camera ready, you could even be silently drifting up to a massive elephant as it feeds in the beautiful papyrus waterways. We get further out from the camp into some of the deeper waterways in and around the delta system uh, using our mud buggies. These are boats with an elevated engine system allowing us to get through some of that lower water. You can see some red lechery antelope in the background there. And that's really what this area is about. It's about unique water adapted species like the red lechery, the herds that move in and across these floodplains as the water starts to arrive and move through them. It's also about some really species specific animals located in this area. This might look like a relatively benign antelope to all of you, but it's actually called the Sitatunga. It's an incredibly well adapted antelope that is essentially an aquatic antelope. It's able to swim well in these waterways. Its nostrils are located at the top of its muzzle so it can completely submerge itself. And it's got some really interestingly designed hooves that allow it, as you this image here, to travel at quite some speed over the top of these papyrus reed systems. It's not only about the antelope in this area, some incredible birds. Any twitches amongst you, bird fanatics will be happy to see that this area is ground zero for Pell's fishing isle, one of the world's most famous fishing isles, regularly seen in and around camp. Well, how about the Angolan painted reed frog? One might think, what's so special about frogs? Well, here it is. Frogs are the world's most important ecological indicator. They suffer very easily from changes in an environment, particularly pollution. And this area has some of the highest densities of varied species of frog anywhere in the world. That tells you one thing. This is true paradise. It has been untouched and unharmed by man, thank you to Botswana's progressive approach to tourism. If you're lucky, you might also get to see some of the predators hunting in these floodplains. Some pretty well-built lion prides in and around this area as they work on their resistance training, hunting lechery through these waterways. From the middle of that delta system, you could even head further north, as we do in the ultimate Botswana and Victoria Falls program, up to a camp like Savuti. Hey, Karen. Yeah, yeah, Savuti is one of my favorites. Um, this year we are staying there uh, for two nights. In 2017 we will actually be extending that to a three-night stay. Um, I just wanted to comment a bit more on the camps we use in these safaris. Um, you know, we've already discussed how these camps really embrace the concept of sustainable tourism and a low-density approach to game viewing, but, you know, these com camps also offer their each their own unique style and really quite a high degree of comfort. Um, camp is just one example, happening to be one of my personal favorites. Um, what I really love about this camp and the other camps on our safaris is that you know not only do you enjoy the many comforts of like a nice boutique hotel um, and then fun and friendly staff, great meals, but you also really maintain that very direct connection to nature. Here in this photo, you can see that uh, there are large screened windows on the tents that allow the breezes and sounds to come through even as you sleep. Um, also, this particular camp is set overlooking a place called the Savuti Channel. Uh, for nearly 30 years, this was a dry channel, just grassland, um, but then in 2008, it you know, something shifted in the plates underneath Botswana and the floodwaters began to appear in the channel again. Um, so this water draws in all kinds of wildlife. If you're an elephant lover in particular, this place is absolutely paradise from June right through October. Um, in fact, some of the best game viewing can be had right from your private veranda at your tent or from the open lounge spaces in the camp due to that channel that runs straight past. Uh, 
It's not just elephants you'll see in this area, and Craig can introduce us further to some of the other species we'd be likely to encounter in this um, far northern part of Botswana. Thank you, Karen. Yes, I really think that the, the Lanyanti in this area around Savuti is an important complement in Okavango visits. It's, you know, there's a lot of unique features in this area. Karen alluded to the Savuti Channel. You've got the Cylinder Spillway, which is a, a mythical connection to that Okavango Delta system. And the river frontage is very, very productive in this area. Massive herds of zebra. You've got incredible woodland species like sable antelope in that area large prides of lion and big packs of wild dog that hunt on the fringes of this woodland area and along that river frontage. And um, as many of you might have heard before, my goodness, is this area fantastic when you're talking about elephant herds through the middle of that dry season from May to October. Some of the biggest elephant herds that move between the waterways in the Salinyanti area. Savuti camping, a fantastic place to see them. If one considers that seasonality and you look at a program such as the Boundless Journeys Kalahari and Okavango Delta program, this starts off in December, runs all the way through to April, and this is focused in and around the Kalahari Plains Camp. Now, Kalahari Plains Camp is just a fantastic little camp with your own star bed located on the top of your roof, as you can see in the main slide here. That's not your main bedroom, but that's what you can sleep on the roof if you want to. Beautiful sunsets, absolutely expansive open vistas. And this is located right in the middle of what is the world's largest unbroken stretch of sand in the world, which is that Kalahari Desert. And the Kalahari Desert and this area, the central Kalahari, has got to be one of the world's largest protected areas. We're talking about an area of about 12 million acres in size. And it's absolutely a fantastic seasonal camp for one really simple reason. Once the summer rains have started to arrive in southern Africa in about late November, they fall into these catchment areas, which are essentially fossil riverbeds. And as these beautiful thunder showers thunder into the catchment areas, that water congregates in the catchment areas, and you get this immense and vibrant, fast growth of short, nutrient-rich grass species in these fossil riverbeds. And that attracts all manner of plains game into this area. What happens as the summer starts to kick off in southern Africa, and there's a plentiful supply of food, this is baby season, of course. You've got huge herds of wildebeest, you've got springbuck and oryx migrating into these fossil riverbeds to feed and drop their babies. Look at the background to this image here. At any other time of the year through the middle of the dry season, that would be completely brown. It's a true desert environment. But at this time of year, look how beautifully vibrant the colors are, and you can almost feel uh, the live lifeblood in this image. And of course, after that lifeblood of all the predators. This area counts as having some of the highest densities of breeding cheetah anywhere in southern Africa. And we can go into a lot of detail around why cheetah love this area, but it's got to do with the fossil riverbeds and the fact that they perform uh, the perfect hunting channels for these cheetah. And with all that springbuck babies and wildebeest babies on, on buffet, the cheetah are in this area and hunting daily. It's not only about about the cheetah, it's about the massive Kalahari black mane lion, some of the most impressive lions in southern Africa. That black mane tends to denote a higher production of testosterone, big, healthy, strong subspecies of lion that are located in and around this area. There's also some really interesting desert adapted species that one finds in the Kalahari. One of everybody's favorite and actually certainly one of my favorite animals the indestructible honey badger. This is a fantastic area to find these honey badgers. Desert environment, so you'll often even see them at dawn and dusk, what is primarily a nocturnal species, as they go about their business. Not even lions proving to scare these tough little buggers. It's also about some unique desert adapted species like brown hyenas, largely solitary hyenas, shaggy looking guys that slink their way around the nightscape in the Kalahari Desert. And if one is lucky, you might even see one of these interesting little characters with their satellite-type ear structure that allows them to dig up any manner of insects and rodents 
as the batty and foxes sniff their way around this desert biome. But what's really superb about Botswana and the Boundless Journeys programs has got to do with these guys. And this is only three of the chaps, not all of the guides that Boundless Journeys is using, but it's really the guides that bring to life these wonderful stories that we've touched on. We talk about a chap like Brooks, who grew up in Botswana, one of the world's most renowned uh, private guides. And Brooks will bring to life any stories. He's able to find some of the most incredible animal interaction. We talk about one of the gentle souls of the guiding world, Francis, an incredible photographer. He'll position the vehicle to make sure you get the best shot. We want to talk about things like tracking and the excitement of getting out the vehicle and tracking on foot. Uh, it would be remiss not to mention someone like Ollie, who's just an amazing tracker. And it's a privilege for me, who's guided many years, to travel with guys like these because they're from Botswana, they live and breathe it every single day. And they have a power for it. And they go through some incredible experiences with their guests. And when we talk about those experiences, it's not only about just the game drives. Granted, at the end of a full day safari, there's a lot to absorb. Nothing better than ending it with a sundown or stop putting a few lovely gin and tonics that you can see in this image here down the hatch and reminiscing on all the experiences and stories that guys like that have brought to life on a journey in Botswana. Well, how about going into the evening and learning all about the majesty of the Southern Hemisphere constellations? Imagine the kind of, kind of skyscapes one is experiencing in a true open desert like the Kalahari over 12 million acres of utter wilderness. If you're in the Kalahari, you might even want to experience a little bit more culture. Spending a day out with a guy like Molani, who works at Kalahari Plains Camp, and he brings to life some of the skills and heritage that has been passed down through the years in his family. And he'll take you out in traditional, traditional Bushman clothing, showcase some of the skills such as using the bow and arrow, digging up venomous parabuthus scorpions, or even fire making, and you yourself can try your hand at some of these experiences. And then you'll see him later that evening behind the bar. And Olani showcases some amazing experiences, but he doesn't be anything he isn't. And will admit to you that he's learned these experiences through his family's heritage. But he'll also find you on Facebook if need be. What a great way to experience a culture like that Bushman heritage in that area. An itinerary through Botswana is often ended with a fantastic experience at one of the world's most iconic destinations and certainly one of the seven wonders of the world, Victoria Falls, at a camp such as Tokalea. This is a great camp that's overlooking the Zambezi River and it comprises of 12 raised, beautifully spacious safari-style tents. It's set inside a nature reserve. It's away from the hustle and bustle of Livingston Town. So it provides just that perfect quiet seclusion to absorb everything that one has experienced while on safari. Great food, Great views, exceptional accommodation. And of course, it's all about the iconic seventh wonder, one of the seventh wonders of the world, the Victoria Falls, as you can spend a morning getting a history lesson in the area, and of course, seeing some spectacular sites such as this. I think it was Livingston who mentioned a site that must have been gazed upon by angels in flight, which certainly rings true when you look at images like this. Back at Tokale Camp, a range of activities, spending time on the Zambezi River, maybe sitting out on your deck watching the elephant herds and other animals that traverse between the river area and the national park behind the Tokale Camp. It's also about learning about all of the environmental practices and ecological sustainable practices that one can enjoy in some of these camps. Tokale is a great camp to soak up some of that experience. If you want to get involved with um, the uh, indigenous uh, tree planting program, maybe you want even you even want to head out to Mkuni markets and meet some of the local villagers there, learn about the children in the wilderness programs in and around Livingston Town. But one of my favorite experiences one can have at Tokale, and that's why I mentioned earlier you want to be spending two nights at Tokale if you can, and that's got to be a walking experience with the white rhino that are located in that reserve around the uh, Tokalea area. And it's such a great experience to walk with these placid white rhino in this area. And it's there you get to learn about 
what has to be the world's most successful rhino conservation program. We all know that rhino are under extreme threat at the moment in Africa, but Botswana is behind the largest translocation moves of rhino from areas of points of pressure in other countries to Botswana. And it's quite telling when you talk about white rhino and black rhino being moved from points of pressure to a country like Botswana. It's quite telling that, and what it means is Botswana is a country that is able to protect value and take care of their rhinos. It is such a pristine safe haven and that for me really just summarizes everything about Botswana that makes it this true wilderness, pristine, beautiful safari experience. Thank you so much, Craig, for uh, taking us through everything that Botswana has to offer. Um, it was great, great to revisit it in my own mind as well. Um, just to recap, in addition to Botswana offering some of Africa's most unique and unspoiled ecosystems, specifically choosing boundless journeys to take you there offers some distinct advantages. Um, for example, we keep our groups small. We never have more than eight guests on one of our Botswana trips. Oftentimes we're running them just with just you know four or six in a group. Um, we make the planning really easy. I specialize in travel to Africa and can answer your questions and really help you get the most out of your trip. And I have resources like Craig to go to if you can ever stump me and, and need more local insight. Um, we can also help you with any pre or post safari arrangements you might need, whether you're extending your time at Tokelea Camp or um, want some assistance with planning a trip to Cape Town or spending some time in the Sabi Sands in South Africa or even a side trip to Namibia. Um, so, you know, we really appreciate you taking the time to sit and listen to this today. Uh, if anyone would like to chat with me further about any of these trips or any of our safaris in Africa, please give me a call. The number is 1-800-941-8010 and you can just ask for Karen. <laughs>